it's Rob and today we're gonna make one of these basically there are so far two different kinds of these skeletons this is this one is a uh, labeled as a pose and stay skeleton I've seen these at various hardware stores uh, Home Depot uh, and then there's this one which is very similar but has some different features I and mean, if you look at them side by side uh, this one has LEDs in the eyes and a very loose jaw that I suspect uh, is made for animatronics because they do have some animatronic skeletons that use this frame. This one has a relatively tight jaw, does not have LED eyes, uh, has better teeth and darker paint. So I'm going to be using this one. Uh, I have some other goals in mind for these guys. Uh, we'll see how that works. Have a spooky Halloween! <laughs> All right, so these are some of the things that you're going to need. Uh, this is weed block. It's, uh, it's the cheaper weed block. It's made of plastic and it's punched, perforated, so that it has all sorts of holes that will go through it. That really helps it stick to glue. Now it does have a dull side and a shiny side. I prefer to keep the dull side out so it looks more like cloth, although you could really do either one. It's just a matter of aesthetics. Honestly, you're not going to be, these aren't going to be seen up close a lot anyway. Uh, the next thing, this is cheesecloth that I got that I then used wood stain to dye a couple of uh, different colors. It's a very mottled. The idea is that you just want to get it darker and not fully white. Spray glue, spray adhesive. This again is another hardware store buy. There are a couple of kinds. This is the lighter duty, kind of the normal duty stuff. There is also some high strength. Um, I don't recommend this for this project. You don't need it. This has much better uses elsewhere. It's also more expensive. This kind of stuff, just fine. Scissors. If you've never seen scissors before, you're probably watching the wrong channel. Heat gun. Uh, I use a heat gun instead of a propane torch. Uh, the primary reason being open flame inside the house. That's generally frowned on. Also, you know, open flame will tend to burn this. So if you have any of this, you know, like you're doing touch-ups or something that when it's on the skeleton, uh, you want to avoid open flame. The girls are being their normal healthy selves. What you doing? What you doing? Being troublemakers? Like usual? Huh? Like usual? So one of, one of the things about these skeletons, every single one of them that I've seen has got a hanging rope on it, or a loop. I like to just loop this over the top here. And there we go. I've got sandbags on the bottom to make sure that it doesn't uh, fall over, which it will have a tendency to do. But this way I can Spin it around, get to all the sides as I need to, and it's at a good height to work on. I can raise or lower the height as necessary. Turns out it works really well. Okay, so there are four basic pieces for the underlayment of the skeleton, the, uh, the black robe part. Super simple. I'll show you the first part right now. Take your weed block, shiny side in, go from about here Unroll it down about as long as you want it. I'd keep it above the feet. So, you know, somewhere more than four feet. Don't worry too much about getting a straight edge. You really don't need straight edges on these at all. As a matter of fact, you're going to want to not have straight edges because straight edges look wrong. You're making a Halloween prop. Take your spray adhesive. Start at the top. Do not get any on the arms yet. Also want to get some on the big pelvic bones. You 
don't need to get it on the legs. Uh, you can go on the inside here if you'd like to, but it's not really necessary. Um, you're going to have plenty going on with just this. I like to make sure it's a little bit dry. Then go up to about where we want it to be. And press it down. All those flat surfaces where you wanted it glued. Now this, this is going to be fairly tight to the spine and that's perfectly okay. Most of the time you're going to be seeing this from the front. When it's on the back and there's the cheesecloth over it, it still looks pretty awesome. Okay, spin it around, go underneath the arms. And we do the same thing here with a little bit of a caveat. I'm going to splay the outside of the rib cage and up here. Don't get any on the arms. Don't spray the inside of the rib cage. The reason for that, and I'm going to show you in a second. Now what you want to do is stick this on, but leave it open. Leave the chest open. You're going to want that skeletal chest to show through. Next we're going to do arms. Uh, one of the things that I like about this, uh, this stuff is that it's very nice. Well, actually, go this way. And get out. Overlap the shoulder a little bit. Get out to just about the wrist. That's about right. Again, you know, spray. Then take this piece. Again, find the middle or about the middle. Get it about where you want it. And stick it on. Now, nice thing I like to do here. Flip it over. Spray on the inside. Flip it back and press. Repeat with the other side. Sometimes the arm joints and the hand joints can be a little sloppy. Uh, you can spray some of the spray adhesive in there and tighten them up and that will help them stay in place but you don't want it to be too much because it can get sticky and you won't be able to bend your skeleton. It's a little tightrope walk that you got to do. I like to spray just the top part because that leaves the bottom part hanging and free and having more of the free hanging allows it to uh, flap in the breeze and look more like cloth. So I want to have the wrist cut around here. So I'm just taking trim. Again, do not worry about getting straight cuts. But get it trimmed. Make sure that it's at a good length. Leave the hands exposed. A little better. Don't worry about it being perfect. It's never going to be perfect and you don't want it to be perfect. You want it to look all ready. So for the hood, 
there's a trick and it makes it really easy. First of all, you want to cut your hood strip probably 18 to 24 inches. Now what you want to do is find a place in here and you want to get it in the middle again. About 8 inches from the front and then cut right up the middle from the back to about that point. So you end up with something like this. Spray glue on the top of the skull. Don't have to go too much on the sides or the back because you'll get enough on the top from the front. Arg. Get it set in the middle where your cut point matches together. And glue it down. You want to pull these through the back and once you get here bring them in an overlap like this. Now if it's going to help pop a little bit of spray adhesive Bring one side over, you can pull it and stretch it. Then do another pop of spray adhesive, follow with the other side. Get it to overlap. And now what you've got is a hooded monstrosity. Now sometimes I like to bring these sides in a little bit. Spray some adhesive down there, glue them down. It looks a little more hood like that way sometimes. Again, not always perfect, but none of us are. Except for you, Dave. Perfect son of a. All right. Next step is trimming and making cuts. I like to go in from the bottom, start pretty much anywhere. Just make some nice long cuts. Don't have to be straight. Make some that are more pointy. And actually cut off pieces. This is where Piper comes in to get her uh, 15 seconds of fame. What you doing, Papa? What you doing? Being a pain in the butt? Being a pain in the butt, you wanna say hi? Wanna say hi to everybody? Wanna say hi to everybody? Say hi, say hi. Oh, he's a good girl. Yeah, he's a good girl. Yeah. He's a good Okay, go play, go play. similar thing with the arms but one thing that I'd like to do is to trim these back have a big opening in the front and then sort of trim them 
up this way so that they get a little narrower toward the arms. Stagger them and get even more effect. So that reminds me of a joke. Where do skeletons keep their armies? In the closet. Huh? Huh? follow the exact same steps but this time with the cheesecloth. scary skeletons made from hardware store materials not very expensive I mean I think that this one of these skeletons comes in under 50 bucks and probably well under 50 I'd say something like 45 would probably do it I haven't totaled everything up but you need the skeleton the weed blocker uh, cheesecloth something to color the cheesecloth with you can do red dye or acrylic paint or like I did wood stain uh, spray adhesive that's it and I think you might be able to get by with using hot glue gun instead of a spray adhesive I haven't tried that yet I just had spray adhesive on hand so I decided to use it anyway that's it for the tutorial thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon What you looking at?